Field IMG College. Welcome to the Coach Jimbo Show, live from Rudy's Barbecue on Harvey Road in College Station. Presented by Capital Farm Credit. Together, we're better. Also brought to you in part by Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue. Visit Rudy's.com to find real Texas barbecue near you. AT&T, proud partner of Texas A&M Athletics. More for your thing. That's our thing. And by Bud Light. This football season, keep it crisp with Bud Light. Please drink responsibly. Now, here is the voice of Texas A&M football, Andrew Monaco. Howdy. And welcome to... The Jimbo Fisher Radio Show, it's presented by Capital Farm Credit. We are at Rudy's as we are every Wednesday, 504 Harvey Road here in College Station. And coming up off the bye week, we're going to talk a little bit about what the Aggies did last week, their preparation for this week and the game against Alabama on Saturday. 1.30, our CHI St. Joseph Health pregame show. 2.30 is the kick between the Fighting Texas Aggies, ranked number 24, 21 in the coaches poll and Alabama as the Aggies take on a number one team, take two this year, second time that they'll take on a number one team. Thank you for joining us all along the Aggie Radio Network. Thank you for joining us here on Facebook Live. Check in throughout, and we will call out to you and see where all the Aggies are watching this one. And we also have your questions. You can uh, offer the questions. We will read them through the hour and some other things coming on this. Jimbo Fisher is with us. We will get right to it when we come back. This is the Jimbo Fisher Radio Show. It's presented by Capital Farm Credit. We're at Rudy's, 504 Harvey Road. Stay with us. This is Aggie Football from Learfield IMG College.
The Jimbo Fisher Radio Show is brought to you by Capital Farm Credit. Capital Farm Credit, together we're better. We are at Rudy's 504 Harvey Road as the Fighting Texas Aggies take on the Alabama Crimson Tide. That will be Saturday at Kyle Field. 2.30 will be the kick. 2.39 to be exact. 1.30 is when we'll have the pregame show for you, along with the head coach of the Fighting Texas Aggies, Jimbo Fisher. Howdy, coach. Howdy. How we doing? I'm doing great. Just great. We talked a little bit last week, and if you would touch on it once again during that bye week, an opportunity um, to do something you don't normally get to do over the course of a season is kind of step back, focus on the fundamentals, and almost like a, a camp scenario all over again, wasn't it? You do. It? You get back and, and you get some practice good on good and you get some individual drills. We're not in the, you know, game planning, two-on-two two things, one-on-one on one things, three-on-three three things, half line. And you can teach and really detail things with a lot more time to do that than you do when you're game planning week. I mean, you do it on the run then, then you can really – break it down the individual drills and the time because you have the game plan but you know it was a good week uh hopefully we gotten better mm -hmm. and uh you know practice been better i thought practice day was really we had really really good for a while then we hit a little law and we grabbed a hold of it again and jumped back out and you know guys are getting better when those lulls happen are you looking for someone besides yourself or the coaches to got say to. hey really got to and you got to get get those guys to do it and they got to get them to recognize it because it's like recognize when there's a problem coming you know what I'm saying? That's the thing. It's not everybody senses it once it's there. And the good teams and the experienced teams and, and just whatever you are, you can start to see things start to happen. You know what I mean? So you put your foot on them. And, they, and that anything is, is uh, I'm going to give you a Daryl Walter. That comes with experience. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you just, uh, you got, you know, you just got to see it a couple times and sense it. And our guys are getting better and better at it. And that's, uh, that comes, you know, I've, I've used the word leadership an awful lot with you, but that's what, a, that's what a leader will do, and he can tell it to either his group, whether it's the linebackers well, or the – Well, and, you know, here's the thing. There's leadership that really recognize after it happens, but then there's guys who have that awareness. Mm -hmm. that It's like players who sense things and do things before they happen, and they can anticipate things. I think people are like that, too. You can start to sense people, feel people. Certain people feel people better than others. Yeah. Doesn't mean they're not a good leader, but some guys have awareness that it's, it's second nature. And, and, that, and the more guys you have like that, the better. And then coaches, too. And then you stop it and say, hey, this, do you feel how you're feeling right now? This is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. This feeling right here, when this starts to happen, we can't allow that to happen. So you've got to educate as you're doing that, too, as a coach. You made a point earlier this week – you told your players, have fun. We yeah. sometimes lose sight of that, don't you do. we? And you have fun by wanting to go do your job. Be mm -hmm. energetic about you. Not, not saying everything's going to be perfect and it's not going to be hard and it's not going to be tough. But, listen, you grew up wanting to play college football. You chose to play in the SEC. you got to go to a place like Texas A&M. When you were in the backyard and you were seven years old and you are playing the kick or the throw or the catch or the tackle or the interception to win the game and you're doing it in your backyard, all those dreams and things you did, sometimes now because of the pressure on that, that's the, the sad thing about it. The kids lose that vibe because it, people come, I got to win, I got to do good, I got to do this. Coaches are pressuring me, fans are pressuring me, families pressure me, media is pressuring me, uh, social media is killing me. You know, or, you know, those things, that's why you, it's, it's, it's harder than it used to be, but you got to remember that. Mm -hmm. That's why you play the game and the enjoyment of playing it, and it's not going to be perfect, and it's not going to not be hard, but you got to remember, man, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate I get to go play football. Can embracing the grind also be part of that fun? Well, it is. I think once you embrace and understand that, it's all in the grind. That's all part of it. That I'm, I'm, I'm even going to have more fun when I do well. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm preparing myself for success. And, and that's a learned behavior in life. I mean, that goes in every business or every, whether you're a school teacher, a businessman, whatever you're doing in life, what you do, mm -hmm. how much do you prep for your job? How much do that you, you know, it's great to call the games, man. There's a lot of prep work. Right. There's a lot of grind work to go watch film, study names, say them the right way, get the guy's stats, be able to pop them out on the air, know what they're going to do. I mean, you know, that, that's all. Nobody's job that it has a great job. There's a lot of work that goes with it, and there's a lot of prep work. And that's all things that I think kids are learning. And I think kids of this day and time are – <laughs> not as inclined to as they were back 25 years ago. Like I say, my God, I sound like my dad. But, I mean, he used to say that too. But, I mean, you do. I mean, as you get older, you know, kids – and because and everything now is the instant gratification. It's the instant this. And, and that's all part of that whole growing process. And, and we have some young guys, and they're getting better and better at that. And that's – and that you don't want to lose – you never want them to lose that joy. And, no, and, you don't. And joy, right? You can't. And, I mean, sometimes you get on. I, I got on a couple guys hard today. But – like I tell them, you get on because you love them and you want them to do well. You got you to show them. And sometimes it takes that and to create some urgency. And I think that's the big thing, too, the urgency you come out of this something with and how well you got to fix them. You've always said coach them on the field, love them off the field, right? You do. I mean, it's not personal. It isn't. I mean, you say things, you push things, you push buttons, you challenge people. But at the same time, man, you got kids, too. And, and I'm mm -hmm. not. But, but at the end of the day, 
we all have to be responsible for what we do and how we do it, mm -hmm. and we got to do it well. He is Jimbo Fisher. He's the head coach of the Fighting Texas Aggies, and the Aggies host Alabama on Saturday at Kyle Field at 2.30. A reminder, Aggie football is brought to you by Bud Light, a proud partner of Texas A&M Athletics, reminding you to enjoy responsibly. Come on back to the Jimbo Fisher Radio Show. It's presented by Capital Farm Credit. This is Aggie football from Learfield IMG College. AT&T is a proud partner of Texas A&M Athletics. More for your thing, that's our thing, as we continue with the Jimbo Fisher Radio Show. It's presented by Capital Farm Credits. We are at Rudy's, 504 Harvey Road, and we thank you all for being here, as you have done each and every week with the head coach of the Fighting Texas Aggies, Jimbo Fisher. And, Coach, um, you talked about the difference in uh, being able to, or, or I asked you about last week. So this week, can you kind of take us through, a, like, what is a mostly on a Monday, on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday? And I, I know as you get to Monday, we do week. a little more on Monday than a lot of folks. We do extensive kicking, about 25, 30 minutes of our kicking. Uh, uh, we work on uh, our base 707 passes, play action passes that we carry, you know, each and every week, our red zone passes. And then we'll have a blitz period, you know, we introduce blitz to them and those things. Then we'll do a 15 minute team period, introducing formations, things they do on defense. That is a, is a main on Monday. Tuesday is mainly a first down, first and 10, second down day. And then also goal line short yardage day. So a lot of those situations. Uh, Wednesdays, mainly third down. Mm -hmm. All your third downs, third and whatever, red zones. Kind of also coming off the goal line. You'll review a lot of red zone stuff. And, that, and you'll also review first and second down, some things you need to clean up from the day before in a couple of those situations. And then Thursdays, a conglomerate of all them along with two-minute 
two-minute offense and uh, all the situations coming out, and we cover everything A to Z from uh, everything you can touch. And that's when you want Along with kicking game each every Tuesday. There's Not only Monday's extensive. Tuesday's got, you know, 15 to 18 minutes. Wednesday's got it, and Thursday's got about another 30 minutes. So we spend a lot of time on special teams, a lot of time on special teams. And you mentioned earlier this year you do it early, middle, late, right? It's not just one period. No, yeah, no, it's not just that. We'll start practice off or start periods, and we do special teams the first eight minutes of practice. In the first period after the middle break of the practice, we, we go right back in the middle of special teams in. That Thursday and the Friday being the walkthrough, that Thursday is when you really remind them to lock in, don't it, you? Well, you do. I mean, you got to clean things up, and we try to have no repeat Thursdays and, and make sure you're sharp and doing the things you got to do. And then Fridays is a walkthrough, and every situation that you can – substitution situation, you know, preparing for everything humanly possible, how we're going to manage the clock, what goes on, situations with the clock, I mean, everything. And then we do two-minute live every Thursday, too. So when you get those – and what's funny, you've done it for 30 years, something comes up about every other time that you, you just – hey, this is a great teaching point to kids. I mean, in two minutes, because those situations fly in the clock and timeouts and scores and field positions and weather and what you're trying to accomplish. I mean, it all, it all matters. It all matters. And by going live, that's the, that's the chance for you to teach. You don't get that moment on a Saturday. No, because you can't script this. You don't want to script those situations. So many things happen, mm -hmm. like I say. And you want them to be, you know, you, you have your scripts and things you got to get prepared for, but they got to be spontaneous and be able to think on the run and adjust and, and think on their feet. For folks who may not know, we focus a lot on first and second team. Your scout team is as important during the week as oh. your first and second team. Well, here's the they? thing. I mean, if, and, and people don't realize this. If they miss a look up once or twice you, and you repeat it on offense, well, then that's three plays at the end of practice you don't get because mm. you're on a time frame. You don't even be allowed to be out there so long. So when your scout teams are not executing at a high level, or, and that's hard on them, man, because they get to see the film, look at a card, do the things you got to do and how you want it done – those guys are just as important as anybody because the one or two looks you get at that for the game, you know, or maybe three at the most during the week, maybe four. I mean, those are, are all you're getting. So they have to do it the right way. And if they don't, and you try to coach on the run and you go repeat, then you got to try to make – I mean, mm -hmm. it's hard. I mean, those guys, have a, they have a very, very tough job. And like I said, I was, I, we were on some of them guys today. I mean, I get on them just like our guys because, it's, to me, there's no difference. They're important to them, to, our, to the starter. Mm -hmm. There's not a bit of difference. And getting us ready to play. And they're doing a ton of learning, right? Oh, because they are learning and sacrificing. A lot of those kids are walk-ons. Some of them aren't. But, listen, I have the most respect for those guys. Mm -hmm. they, they work their tails off, and it, it's the you know everybody on that team matters, and it's all the same. And there's a reason why next year there will be a guy, if you see whatever his class will be, and you see that squad next to it, they've earned everything because oh, of what they, they did this, every week, right? Let me tell you something. They bust their tail. And this thing, when you're rotating ones and twos on one side, some of those guys are taking every rep. They're maybe doing double duty. Yeah. So, I mean, it's hard. And doing something that you don't know, you're doing the other team's look, and you're trying to – on the run, that's hard, man. I mean, that's, that's a mental strain and a physical strain. And sometimes they may know – they may know, like, the, take Saturday, they may know Alabama better because well, they, they well, were immersed in it, Well, right? they do. I mean, because they, they, they sit and watch the film and practice and run the reps and, do, and they'll get the looks. He's Jimbo Fisher. He's the head coach of the Fighting Texas Aggies who will take on Alabama on Saturday at 2.30 at Kyle Field. We'll come back to the Jimbo Fisher Radio Show. It's presented by Capital Farm Credit. This is Aggie Football from Learfield IMG College.
football and barbecue lovers know the perfect brisket needs the right wood. Rudy's smokes all their meats using their delicious signature rubs in 100% oak fired pits. Get your real Texas barbecue fix today at Rudy's or on the web at rudys.com. We are at Rudy's 504 Harvey Road here in College Station and this is the Jimbo Fisher Radio Show. It's presented by Capital Farm Credits. The Aggies and the Alabama Crimson Tide on Saturday, 1.30 for our CHI St. Joseph Health pregame show. The kick at 2.30. We hope that you will join us all along the Texas A&M Football Network. Coach, they're checking in from Walnut Creek, California, Chattanooga, Iowa, San Diego, California, throughout the state of Texas, and Katy, Kingswood, Corpus, Marble Falls, Flatonia, and even up there in Dallas. Thank you for checking in on Facebook Live. I talk about the state of Texas, but you know this brand you say is national. A chance to get out and see recruits. A bigger picture, what what do you look for in a recruit? Oh, I mean, that's... You have about three hours. I mean, you, when you say it, I mean, you really do. It just depends. I mean, there has to be a certain talent level, mm -hmm. which allows him to compete at this, you know, size, speed, and or his physical skills, but also his mental skills, his competitive skills, his character skills, just his fit and what we're asking him to do. I mean, you know, you can get – there's tons of great players, but how do you want to use them? How do they fit in your system? What can they do? How do they do it? Can, and the ability to process information and think. I mean, there's so many guys, you know, like I said before, being able to think on your feet and intelligence level. I mean, I just happened to look up there and I say in New England, there's a highlight of New England on TV, and when I watch them play, how smart and intelligent those players are. You know what I'm saying? That takes time, and they fit into a system, and they're being asked to do certain things and how they and create within that culture. And, you know, those are all, those are all factors. I mean, there's just tons and tons of factors that, that come into it. They have to fit your culture that you have with your team. They have to fit the A&M culture too, don't they? They do. A&M, your team, what you're asking them to do. And, you know, sometimes you can't have – it's like anything. You can't have too many of one kind. You know, a guy's a great player and you've got three of those already that are very similar skill talents. You need something else. And people, you know, is that guy good enough? Yes, there's guys that are definitely good enough at times to be at certain schools. And you, you don't take them because I've got three guys that are very similar. I have to have something over here like this, like that. I mean, all those factors come into recruiting all the time. You can always see the talent. Yes. Right? You, you, you know that. And, and, and you do, and sometimes you don't. I mean, that's the thing where getting there to evaluate a kid practice or getting him in camp. I mean, and film tells you a lot. People say, watch film. But I'm going to tell you, and I've watched it for 30 years. And I've watched it. I mean, I'm a film junkie. I really am. I love, watch, I love studying the game of football. I love, it's amazing how five or ten minutes in person of watching somebody – compared to six hours of film, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's, it's about equal. Or what, I mean, you can tell so much in person. Just The film can tell you so much, and it does. But being able to see guys in person, and then also talk to them. Mm -hmm. And if you get them in camp and coach them a little bit and see their intellectual levels and how they process and how they interact with other players, and that's all part of it too. What kind of teammate are they? Mm -hmm. What kind of guy are they? See how they interact with people. I mean, and we don't always get that luxury. You don't. You don't always get guys to your, you know, to, to your camps and be able to coach them and do those things. And, and the way camps are set up now, we very rarely – I mean, as as a head coach, you're only on you're really only on the road in December and January as far as being able to go out, mm -hmm. evaluate games on Friday in the fall. But that's harder to do during the season. You know, you don't get the time you used to have years and years ago to evaluation. So it gets tougher and tougher. And relationships are huge. Oh, and they all are. And 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 that points also to having, as you have, the right assistants. Right? Oh, because you do. that's where that's where the well, first you do. connection and, comes. And also, you got to you got to coach your coaches. You coach your coaches to what you want, how you want things done, the way you want things done, and, you know, judging their ability to judge players. And, and, and that same ratio – and that's what you say. Two people can see two different things. And that can be good and that can be bad. I mean, you've got to, you know, understand what you're looking for, how you're looking for, and what we want to look as a program. And you're educating your coaches in, in what to do, and they get better and better at it in time as they go too. When you talk with a, with a player's coach in, in high school, you, do you want to know how he practices? Is oh, yeah. You want, to know, you want to know everything about him. Mm -hmm. How's he interact? How's he off the field? I mean, everything about him. Yeah. Listen, there's no perfect players in this world. There's no perfect people. People make mistakes all the time, and that's the thing we've got to realize. But, you know, kids that have the right heart, the right in, in, intuitiveness, the right instincts, those guys are all coached or corrected. And as kids, we all make mistakes. Coaches, we make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. You know what I'm saying? But can you be corrected and do it and do it for the right reason? Nobody's perfect. And you have to also look and see where they're going to be in four or five years. Well, that's the other thing, you know, a ceiling on them. Mm -hmm. where, where, you know, what kind of player are they going to be one year from now, two years from now, four years from now? Mm. How quick they have to make an impact? I mean, you know, there, there's the number of things that go into recruiting are, like I say, it's endless. I mean, it's endless. And they're all debatable. Yeah. 
That's the thing. Everything is debatable and up for grabs. Isn't everything in America debatable? Everybody's got an opinion. <laughs> Everybody does. <laughs> and, and like you say, you may look at any other coach. You put you, you next guys, to somebody watch. else. You may see two different things. I'm going to tell, right? tell you that. You do. I'm going to tell you the other thing. People don't realize this. What kind of mood are you in? <laughs> what just happened for the last hour before? How mm-hmm. tired are you? How, how are, what's on your mind? How many things are on your mind? How many this? That's why you'll see us re- break that film out on a position and we rank the corners, quarterback, whatever it may be. I may do it 10, 15 times during a year. And redo it. Then we just, yep, I want to see it again. Am I seeing it? Because I want to I see, am I seeing the same things I wrote down before? And every time we, we do a, a calculated written out value, and I, I'm there to have it. Okay, how did I see that? Where am I? Where did I say? Well, maybe I did. I mean, it's amazing. How many, think about how many times you go to do something, and there's two or three things going on in your life and all that. I mean, all, that, all those things matter. You say it doesn't. It does. And that's why we try to be as extensive as we can. And our minds change. Your mind don't change. You just your opinion changes. Right. I, I was going to say clouds your judgment, but it, more, it affects the judgment. I know people don't like to ever say that. I tell that to people and say, what do you mean? You want, well, think about it. If you're, you're, when you evaluate a guy, the amount of time, the things you get in the day, I mean, there's tons of things that affect your opinion of something. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so it's as At much At that particular time. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's, I'm not about what? Not about you. <laughs> So do you do it with do you do it with then fresh eyes those times? Oh yeah, yeah, we do it when we do it as a staff. And I make everybody give their opinion. Make everybody write it out. I want to hear what your opinion is. Tell me what you say. Say it in front of them. You Man, don't want I, yes men, do you? I don't want yes men. I want your opinion. We can we can agree to disagree mm-hmm. and then we once we agree on it, we'll we'll we go with it. But and then like I say, I'll say, Okay, defensive ends. Terry, give me an opinion here. Then somebody else defensive I'll let him go first. Yeah. Because listen, if you if you're a coach, you can't just only recruit your own position. Everybody thinks you only recruit your own position. That's not true. A lot of guys recruit guys that don't play their position and evaluate them and in your area. And we area recruit. That's the only way you can cover the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And if you can't recruit another position and understand what we're looking for, then you don't need to be at this level. I worked with a, a former coach. If, he, if everybody agreed, uh, oh, he, he would say, what are we missing? Yeah, people say, well, them coaches are arguing. Yeah, we argue all the time. <laughs> I mean, that's this. Think about you and your wife <laughs> huh? and your kids and your brother and your grandma and your dad. I mean, think how many arguments you were in as a family. That may, I mean, you're arguing, but it has nothing to do – that's your opinion. I mean, that's, it, it, that's, that's the way things are. I mean, you, you hash things out, you get to the end of it, and you figure it out. That's exactly right. He's the head coach of the Fighting Texas Aggies. That's Jimbo Fisher, and this is the Jimbo Fisher Radio Show. It's presented by Capital Farm Credit. Come on back to Rudy's, 504 Harvey Road. This is Aggie Football from Learfield IMG College.
Gritty is an absolute game-changing provider of electricity. They're giving Texans access to wholesale electricity with no markups, all for a membership of just $9.99 a month. We continue with the Jimbo Fisher Radio Show. It's presented by Capital Farm Credit. We're at Rudy's, 504 Harvey Road here in College Station, and it is question time for Coach. Up first this week, Ian Curtis is first. Ian's question is, what do you feel is most unique about you as a coach? Answering Ian's questions every, exactly. <laughs> every Wednesday. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> Where's he at? He got always good questions. There he is. You know, I, I, that's a good <laughs> yeah, I guess you'd have to ask somebody. I don't know what I would think. I'll tell you what, you must sit home and think. You've you got good ones now. He really, he's a deep thinker, yes, which is. is really good. You've got people like that usually end up being very, very successful. Yep. Do some really good we things. We will be working for you Ian know, someday. I, I don't know. I mean, hopefully that, you know, people say, what your, I don't care what your legacy is. What, what, as a coach, what you, just, you just want them to know you cared and you want, you want good things for them and you want them to play and have the joy of having success and understanding hard work pays off and that, you know, you've got to do things the right way as far as how you go about the business. And this game rewards those who do it right. And it, it, it doesn't reward shortcuts. And, and hopefully they can get that across because if they can get that across, they can be successful in everything they do in life. And people say, is that a say No, it isn't. At the end of the day, it's all it's about. Listen, we're ball coaches, man. We coach ball. All right, big deal. I mean, it, it, it's, we're blessed to do it. I love doing it. But at the end of the day, we're all, we, ain't, we ain't no different. I ain't no different than anybody out here. Nobody's different than me. The players aren't any different. God blesses us with different abilities and different things we all do. That's what we do. But hopefully we do it the right way and, and you know, represent A&M and then do things like we want them to be done. And I want them to have success. I want them to feel the ability to have success and we can get that across and that uniqueness that I hope they can fit, sense that from me. It's not personal when we get on them and coach them and, and that happens, honestly. You'd say blessed. Blessed to have the parents that you had. Huh. Were you also blessed to have the coaches that you worked with? I really were. I mean, at a young age and still when I was a Pop Warner coach, I mean, we had good teams, but we were coached. I mean, we, they turn it back. In the, our 20-hour rule got blown out the window in Pop Warner. I mean, when they, when they, had, they turned the car lights on, and, he, you know, like, and we're playing in them championship games. We can't practice because it's dark, and they got car lights, you know what I mean, surrounding the field so we can see it and practice. And I mean, I was. But, but did hard work. I mean, one thing I was blessed around, my father, my mother, and them, but, but the coaches and the people I was around, that, that hard work is what's going to pay off, and you have to put the work in to get the results in which you want. And, and But they – but. They coached hard, but they cared. Mm -hmm. but all the coaches right. I've ever had, I never had a bad coach as far as did not care. Whether it was a little league I remember every one of them, Pop Warner, junior high, high school. I mean, I was blessed to be around good people. And uh, I think everything was perfect again in what you did. But right. they cared and it mattered and they worked you hard and believed in what they did. They well, loved what they did. Ultimately, that's what you want your legacy to be then. Well, I don't – your legacy, whatever. I just want people to know you care. Gotcha. I mean, I don't – you don't co I don't believe you coach for a legacy. You coach to because it's something you do and you can help somebody get better. Steve wants to know, how much harder is it for coaches to build depth when it's so easy uh, for players to put name in the transfer portal? Uh, <laughs> you want to talk about that one now. <laughs> uh, we, we, could be, we could be here about seven days. <laughs> but, and, and also coach them hard. I mean, listen, to get in, there's no, like I say, tell me an easy way to be good in football. There isn't one. Mm -mm. You have, and I mean, and there's got to be hard coaching. There's got to be hard love. There's got to be grind. There's got to be failures. And that's just something, and you try. Hopefully, they can embrace that, and that's why you try to love them off the field. I mean, I got on a couple guys really hard today that I'm counting on that I think are phenomenal players that can really make a difference in our football team and, and in their life and everything else. And you know, you, you, I, when I walk away, I feel bad. But at the end of the day, man, you got to get them to do it. You got to get them to, to to do it for their sake. You know what I'm saying? And you no, know, they may not appreciate it now, but I think later on, you know, it's funny. You get you get all those you get all those things uh, later on in life from some of them. But it's just it's hard. It is hard because. You can go. And then listen, there is times to transfer. I'm not against transfer. Mm -hmm. I transferred as an athlete. I mean, there's a proper way to do it and a way to do it. But just make sure you put everything in it before you make you the endeavor to You don't want them to, to run away from something, No, do you? That's, that's the thing. Because if you ever start running, you never stop running. Mm -hmm. You know, and, that, and that's the part of it. Kinsey is the fighting Texas Aggie class of 2010. a and had a long line of stellar offensive linemen with Joko and the Matthews brothers. Well, they had a bunch McCoy, of them there for yeah. a while, a bunch of first-rounders. So, so it's been pointed out, the, the issues on the offensive yeah. line. I will, I will cut to this. Your thoughts on the offensive line and what you want to see from them in the future. Well, I think, you know, people don't realize there's two things. Offensive line is the most unnatural football, posi football position to play. It's a complete learned behavior. Everything else you do naturally, run and play and tackle and bend. I mean, when you squat down and walk like a duck, 
and work your feet and squat and lift and do and play. It's a learned behavior. It's a very technical. Every, everything in football is very technical. But offensive line is very technical. It's very cerebral. It's very physical. It's very demanding. And there's a high rate of communication. I mean, you're talking about five guys that are mixed in there together that have to really communicate. And if one guy is a fraction off, mm -hmm. it, it, I mean, his steps in there, there, if one guy gets a half a step up and there's a crease in between something, something can happen. You know what I'm saying? So the communication is critical. They're technical. We're getting better and better each day. We've got a lot of guys. And when your new guy is the center, how they communicate is big. I mean, losing Eric McCoy is huge just because the guys have gotten so used to how he communicated. And they make all the calls. They adjust their calls on the run. Our new guys do it. And if they do it a little bit different, you know, that can affect, oh, I didn't hear it that way. I didn't think it that way. And he may, the call may be right. Mm -hmm. It's just how they do things. Offensive line is, is a, man, it's hard. To, it, it's a never-ending process. We're getting better and better, and we need to get better. And, 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 and like I say, some of those issues, it's just like when, when, you, when you don't play well, it's always the quarterback's fault. And it's always the offensive line's fault. But, you know, going to run the football, it's not just offensive line. There's tight ends are involved. There's a lot of mistakes we've had at tight end or receiver pushing the next level or we miss a cut by the back. Football is the greatest team sport, and that's why it's funny when, when you sit back and people start blaming what, what goes on. On that one, yes. On them two, no. On the, you know, but that's what – and I understand that. I mean, that's, that, there's nothing wrong with that. But offensive line is a very, very hard – it's all the work and no glory. <laughs> they only notice you when it doesn't go well. <laughs> that's, exactly, that's exactly right. When, when, when all the receivers are catching balls and all everybody's running for a touchdown and everybody's throwing a touchdown, boy, them guys are good. Offensive <laughs> line, you don't even do nothing. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's, a, it's exactly hard on it, right. It really is. That's Jimbo Fisher. This is the Jimbo Fisher Radio Show. It's presented by Capital Farm Credits. We're at Rudy's, 504 Harvey Road here in College Station. Come on back. This is Aggie Football from Learfield IMG College. Texas Farm Bureau Insurance wants to give you a VIP Aggie basketball fan experience this year. Go to 12thman.com slash maroon contest and register. One winner and a guest will receive game tickets, a VIP tour of Reed Arena, and will be recognized on the video board during the game. Register today at 12thman.com slash maroon contest. Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, proud partner of Texas A&M Athletics. The Jimbo Fisher Radio Show presented by Capital Farm Credit rolls on from Rudy's 504. 
Harvey Road. Aggies, Alabama on Saturday. During the coaches' nights throughout the state, Coach, you said we play number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. You should have said we're playing number one, number one again. <laughs> <laughs> here, here it is, the number one team twice it in the is. same we season. We don't get that opportunity. It's a great opportunity. Like I told our guys today, man, have fun and make memories. That's what it's about. You've got to make memories. You've got to go out there and have fun. You've got to have a right, you know, think and have positive thoughts. I mean, like I say, get on, guys, get on. But think of the positive things that can happen, how you're going to play and where you're going to play. And that's all part of building the culture of expecting to win and understanding to win. So when you have success, you're not, it doesn't shock people. And some people say, well, that, what it would, yes. Kids who, I mean, they say all those things, but do you really believe them? That's all part of your program building and what goes on. So when you have success, it doesn't shock you that you you're, feel like you're in foreign land and I got it. No. That's what I work every day. It's what I do it every day. And I go back and do the same things the next day and build on it and build on it and build on it. And part of having success is expecting to have success, seeing yourself having success, and learning to prepare for it. And that's that was all these opportunities we have. And have fun with doing it and, you know, get after them this weekend. You used uh, these words for Tua. You said command. Wide receivers are dynamic. Tight ends. And you said plural. <laughs> athletic. And remember everybody said last year the secondary was really young? They're not young any longer. No, it's amazing. <laughs> They're experienced, right? Exactly. Uh, but th th that's, that's some things I'm looking forward to. <laughs> <laughs> you, it, but pretty, it does. Pretty it, soon you're going to be saying that about nothing, your team, There's nothing though. about experience. There it is. I mean, and it's not, it's not that you can't do it or won't. It's just that, that can, the continuity in which you do it with, the consistency in which you do it with. It's just like you and your job and everything you do. The more experience you get and you're locked in and you learn how to focus, you understand what it takes, and the whole – mental commitment and, and people say well they should have well listen you're, it's all learned and those guys in their secondary are doing a good job i mean listen certain is, is one heck of a player Diggs is a heck of a player at corner 15 is a phenomenal yeah. safety all, those guys are all going to be high draft picks 21 does a great job nickel shaheem carter i mean i recruited a lot of those guys back when i was at florida state i mean years and years ago we were on a lot of those guys we all have top classes like we are here so you're on the same guys you know the guys and uh uh, but th that group in the secondary is very good. They're up front. They've got some young guys in there, but they're surrounded with a lot of experience, and they're very talented guys, and they're playing well. Someone, uh, someone during the Monday media availability asked Coach about, you know, the defense. They, there's some teams getting some yards. They look like they're down a little bit. Coach said, what tape are you guys watching? I, did. I mean, they do, but, I mean, it can be deceiving. Stats can be very deceiving. When you get them, how you get them, you know what I mean? Or if the game is still within a one- or two-score game, you know, you know, even though – in our Auburn game, we know we were down, but there was the, you get a score right there. You're right within one score mm -hmm. to winning the game. I mean, so those things matter. Certainly when you're down four or five touchdowns, I mean, you know, who you're getting them against and how you're getting them can, can be a big difference. But they give up some plays. I mean, they're, this, they're human like everybody else. They all, But at the same time, they're playing very good. They're dynamic on offense. They're playing very well on defense. They can affect, they can affect you in all three levels with a front guy, a linebacker, and a, or a nickel in that second level when the secondary guys. And on offense, offensive linemen. Yep. Receivers, backs, and quarterback. I mean, that's that's what you get to when you when you have a program. That's why they're number one. Right. And that's listen, we're we're not there yet, but we're getting that. We got some young guys that I think are going to be those types of players too. And we're developing those guys, and we're going to be there. And we're going to be right there with them. But we're going to be there Saturday too. That doesn't matter. No age limit on playing well. And that's we got to get them to play well and do it. Play well consistently. Right. We have our moments. You 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 keep saying that those players are there. Once you hit those, oh, that, they are. That I mean, they can the see them, and, and, it, and the players. There's, there's nobody more frustrated. They are. Right. I mean, they see them. They, I can tell. You think guys mess up on purpose? I mean, people get mad at these. I mean, you think they actually get. They think a kid messes up on purpose? No. And and I got to remember that sometimes too <laughs> when yeah. I'm getting on them. But it's it's how you got to get them to think and how you got to get them to prepare. And people, it just it takes time. It's like your kids someday. You know, one day you think that boy ain't never gonna have. A I'm gonna have to take care of him my whole life. <laughs> He's gonna have to live with me. Till he's 80. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to have to build another room. I'm going to have to build a – and I can't, I can't have him. I'm going to have to build another part of a room because he'll drive me crazy. But, but then all of a sudden, it's, it's a month later, and you go, who is that guy? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, that's why you keep coaching him. You keep loving on him. You keep – as a parent, you keep parenting him. And they get it. I mean, you just, it, just, it just takes time sometimes. You always talk about big plays. What Alabama yes. has done is what they call the knots, the non-offensive touchdowns. They really turn those into big plays, and they could be momentum changers, can't they? They do. I mean, they can affect you in all. Great teams, people say, well, defense wins championships. Offense, no. Great teams win championships. They're good on offense, good on defense, and good on special teams. All that other is just cliche stuff. You know what I'm saying? And they can affect you in all three phases. And they can change games with different things on defense and special teams, and they go on to it. And then their offense is so opportunistic and explosive. I don't think anybody knows Nick Saban better than you. Was he always like this? 
the expectations of being great? Yeah, he was. And, and like I say, he had his grinds and, and when he was coming up, too, when he was building Michigan State. I mean, there was a lot of five and seven, six and six years, seven and six years. I mean, and he finally this last year got to 10 and two. And then people forget, when we went to LSU, we went eight and four the first year. Then we went, then we actually ended up going 10 and three. We won the SEC. We lucked into it a little bit. We had three losses. You know what I mean? And then, but that side, everybody lost three. And we got there and we upset Tennessee in the game after we won the Sugar Bowl. Then turn around the next year and we got a good run and we're going, get a couple guys hurt. And we're six in the country and end up eight and five. I mean, we dropped to eight and five in the third year really quickly. And then the fourth year, but we had good, we kept, but the program, we were doing things right. Mm -hmm. And we were recruiting right. We were doing it right. They were, the competitive nature, even what, the results weren't always there. And all of a sudden, that fourth year, we got two or three classes in there, and it clicked, and the culture changed, and we won a national championship. And then the next year, we lost three, going nine and three. And then it then went 10 and two, 10 and two, then one. I mean, and, you know, it, it just it took time, just like at Florida right. State. I mean, all those times, and he had his times there at, Florida, at Alabama, and they, they had a seven and six year the very first right. year. And then they hit they hit one and then lost the SEC and then hit a third year, fourth year. But, you know, each place is different, and it's – but it's – Everybody has that process. You've got to put things in place. You've got to put a foundation in place in your organization that's substantial, that's not going to be blown away. Right. And to keep doing things the right way, you'll get the results, I promise. And that's what's here. Right. It is. We're doing things the right way, and I, but we've got a good player. Our players are playing hard. We've yep. got to play them more consistent. We've got to coach them better, and we've got to keep putting them in those positions. They've got to understand and how to deal with expectations right. and how to deal with that. We've got, we got a great opportunity this weekend to lay it out there and play and, and make Aggies proud. And uh, I want to make them proud. I want to make all of our fans proud. 2.30 on Saturday at Kyle Field, the fighting Texas Aggies and the Alabama Crimson Tide. One thirty all along the network with the CHI St. Joseph Health pregame show. at and is a proud partner of Texas A&M Athletics. More for your thing. That's our thing. We'll come back to the Jimbo Fisher Radio Show presented by Capital Farm Credits. This is Aggie Football from Learfield IMG College. by Capital Farm Credits. We're at Rudy's 504 Harvey Road. Oh, we waited 52 minutes into this hour. Coach, you knew we were going to get to this point. Jimbo Fisher's birthday today. No better place to celebrate this birthday. We do have... Oh, Lord. <laughs> I don't here, need this. Here, here it comes. Here it comes. Now, the, the cookie cake for Coach has been all cut up. It will be put there in the back at Rudy's. Yes. Please help yourselves. Again, please. you can also, your, your, you. <laughs> please, he's saying, you can also, dessert is also on Jimbo. I didn't know if you knew that. Exactly. Far left register for that here at Rudy's. Happy birthday, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. It's always good to have. Absolutely special. Yeah, you say, man, I don't <laughs> want him anymore, but yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. 
It beats the alternative, it doesn't it? It certainly <laughs> does. Uh, I just want you to know, because the other check-in, as we've done all, all season long, uh, Con Constantino says, gig em from Melbourne. Beat wow. the hell out of Bama. There will be two Constantinos at Kyle Field this Saturday. Good luck, Jimbo and company, and a ton of That's people, awesome. Coach, on Facebook wishing you a happy birthday. Tom, thank you very much. It's great to be part of this great, this great university and uh, working here, that's for sure. Thrilled to have you here. We're going to take one more break and wrap up the Jimbo Fisher Radio Show presented by Capital Farm Credit. Stay with us. This is Aggie Football from Learfield IMG College. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield IMG College under the broadcasting rights granted by Texas A&M University. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the express written consent of Texas A&M University and Learfield IMG College. Announcers are provided by Learfield IMG College and Texas A&M University. As we wrap up this edition of the Jimbo Fisher Radio Show, it's presented by Capital Farm Credit, Coach Saturday, Alabama. Uh, you were asked about rhythm, and you tied together rhythm and momentum. When you have momentum, you can get rhythm. Can't you do. You? I mean, you get into you get into play, and and, you, and it, people say, well, "What is it like?" It's you. You quit thinking, you start reacting. It, it, people come back, and you, it's amazing how many times you say when a guy really plays well, and you ask, him, "What were you thinking?" <laughs> well, I don't know. Really, wasn't thinking nothing exactly. You knew what to do. You knew how to do it. You were trusting your eyes. You are processing the information. You were reacting, and that gets you in a rhythm. Then you get momentum in the game, and you have confidence. And it's it's amazing how quick. It can come, it can go. I mean, that's, that's the thing about kids, and you got to remind them. That's why we try to practice at the pace we practice, the intensity we practice, so they have to forget it and play the next play. The most important play is the next one. All right, we had one bad one. But you can't let one become two, two become three, three become four. Can't let a crack become a hole or a major crevice. And, uh, and you got to be able to do it. You always talk about reacting to big plays. It's not just big plays against you. It's the big plays you make and how you react to them yeah, also. And, 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 you know, we want our – Run out there, and everybody know we made. All right, now we know we made. Now go make another one. You know what I mean? And, get, and keep yourself in the moment to where you don't get so excited that you forget what the next situation is, so you can execute and do it. Now, now I understand, guys, that we're in the. We're in the everybody wants to be seen. Everybody wants to be known. I, and I, the excitement. I work too hard to go play. I get all that. If you can do that and then go play the next play, I don't. I don't care if you do 38 backflips. They don't call a penalty. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but but you got to stay in the moment and be able to go play the next play and the next situation is there and you know can't have one and then turn around and, and lose focus because you get so excited. And then that and then we got to learn to do those things. So I mean, but we're getting there. I mean, guys are getting there. Happy birthday, coach. Thank you. Glad you to be bet. here. Thank y'all. This has been the Jimbo Fisher Radio Show presented by Capital Farm Credit from Rudy's 504. 
Harvey Road. For our engineer, Kevin Menchow. For Abby Klatt, who is the producer in our Learfield IMG College Studios. For the head coach of the Fighting Texas Aggies, Jimbo Fisher, I'm Andrew Monaco. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see. You, we'll talk to you 1.30 on Saturday, 2.30 to the kick. The Fighting Texas Aggies and the Alabama Crimson Tide. This is Aggie football from Learfield IMG College.